It has been six weeks since Britain voted to leave the EU and the government is still a little shy on Brexit. While Theresa May has been focusing on domestic matters, preparations have been ongoing behind the scenes for serious Brexit talks to begin in the autumn. In particular, the government has been reaching out to businesses large and small in recent weeks, listening to demands on jobs and immigration. Reconciling these two is not looking any easier. The new department for exiting the EU has also had a bumpy start. The ministry is conducting meetings in a branch of Starbucks until it can find some offices, while civil servants across Whitehall have been reluctant to sign up to the new ministry. Thankfully, David Davis, the Brexit secretary, revealed he is spending his summer holidays reading thousands of pages of trade negotiations. Hopefully in September, he'll be able to tell us what he's thinking. The Bank of England started its guilt buying programme this week to help curtail the potential negative effects of Brexit on the economy. But the central bank struggled at first to find enough sellers and such high demand pushed government bonds into historic negative territory. But there was some good news from the high street. In July, retail sales were up 1.1% year on year. It might not be a huge increase, but it does suggest that the spending in Brexit Britain has not collapsed, as some predicted, or it might just be the sunny weather. At a time when Britain needs to be building bridges beyond Europe, this week its future relationship with China began to look uncertain. In an article for the FT, the Chinese ambassador said that UK-China relations were at a historic juncture and urged the government to make a decision on the stalling Hinkley Point nuclear power project in Somerset. Now, this is the first of many diplomatic challenges for the government, and one of Theresa May's top advisers, Nick Timothy, has expressed sceptical views of China and hinted they should not play a part in a crucial piece of national infrastructure like Hinkley Point. But if Britain walks away from this, this project, it will clearly create bad blood and disgruntle a key ally. France also needs to be considered as the state-owned EDF is due to be building the power station and withdrawing risk-creating acrimony across the English Channel too.